Task number one is brought to you by Mad Marco Enterprises. Show idea, concept, and design by Marco Liberati. Please enjoy the show. <laughs> Cheers. Tell us another one. A show with tall tales, jokes, and antidotes. And now, please welcome your host, Marco Liberati. Marco. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Beautiful, warm, toss another one audience. Thank you guys for coming out, supporting live comedy. That is amazing. Uh, we've got a great show lined up for you today. We've got uh, sketch comedy, we've got jokes, and we've got stand-up comedy. We've got a good variety of comedy for you guys today in the audience and at home. So thanks for joining us. Uh, I'll start off with just a little story about a neighbour I have. Uh, so I've got some great neighbours, and uh, one neighbour in particular. She's a Greek lady, and her name is Helen. And, uh, and that's how you say the name. It's Helen. You've got to put the H in there. And, uh, and Helen decides to pop her head over the fence one day. And she says to me, she goes, um, Marco, Marco, I have, a, I have a question for you. I'm like, yes, yes. Helen, anything. How, how can I help? She goes, oh, Marco, can you tell me, please, uh, what is Kant? <laughs> now, I have to be careful here because, you know, being Greek and English not being her first language, I had to clarify. So I said, oh, Helen, um, yeah, what do you mean? You know, she, maybe she's trying to say cannot, can't, I, I don't know. So I said, oh, Helen, what's, what's going on? What's the story? So she goes, oh, Marco, Marco, uh, uh, my son, Georgie, my beautiful son, Georgie, such a beautiful boy, you know, Georgie. And uh, he come home the other day, he says to me, ma, ma, I'm going to go out with my friends, going to go for disco. So uh, when my friends come, I'm going to go have a shower, get ready. If my friends come, tell the cunts to wait outside. <laughs> right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Georgie in the shower, he gets ready. Anyway, I hear knock on the door. I open the door. It's a Georgie's friends. I say, hello, cunts. <laughs> wait outside. So, <laughs> anyway, Georgie gets ready, finish the shower. He says, Ma, I'll go out to my friends. And he go wait for the disco. So anyway, I wait for Georgie to come home, waiting, waiting, 12 o'clock, midnight, 1 o'clock. I make some biscuits for Georgie for when he come back, a cup of hot milk. <laughs> anyway, he come back and he says to me, Ma, what did you say to my friends? They think you're gross. <laughs> so Marco... What is guns? So now my wife's Greek, and I know a little bit of Greek, and uh, and and cunts translated to Greek is muni. So I explained to Helen. I said, "Oh, that's uh, it's actually a rude word. It's actually muni. It means you know, cunts, muni." She's like, "Oh my God!" Oh, Papa, don't believe my beautiful George, you can do this to me. Oh, that fucking cunt, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. So that's my lovely neighbor, Helen. Thank you, thank you. Oh. And now it's time for our next segment. She's joining us for Joke Off. Hello, Marty. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Uh, take a little step over, I'll take a little step back, and uh, now we're all lit up. We are ready to do our segment, Joke Off. Did you prepare a joke or two? Yes, I you did two. Two jokes, fantastic. that's perfect. Yeah. I'll try and remember two jokes. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm sure we'll work it out. Yeah. Uh, we've, got a, uh, we've got a joke that I will tell, and that's from uh, one of our beautiful guest audience members here who uh, contributes to the show. Uh, I've got a Maggie Brownlee joke to do as well. I think we've got one for almost every episode. She's amazing. So a big round of applause for Maggie. Thank you. Uh, would you like to start off? Okay. 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 I'll Ladies before uh, gentlemen, off you go. Uh, all 12 Chinese zodiac animals can be eaten. <laughs> That's not the punchline, it's coming. <laughs> now we know why bat is not on the list. Hey. There we go. <laughs> there we go. COVID joke. It's still topical, still topical, still relevant. Yeah. All right, so uh, I've got a joke. This one here is a lady pulls into a service station and her car's broken down. So she's pushing her car into the service station and she sees the mechanic and she goes, oh, my car's broken down, can you help me out, please? So the mechanic looks at the car. Within a couple of minutes, he's got the thing purring beautifully. She goes, what happened? He goes, oh, just, um, just crap in the carburetor. She's like, oh, okay. 
Uh, how often do I have to do that? <laughs> oh. There we go. <laughs> Anyhow, it's over uh, to you. Marty. Yes, so Make I've got this one. Uh, we all know of the law of attraction, right? Yes. You attract who you are. Yes. And you are what you eat. Yes. <laughs> so if you're attracting assholes, Oh. <laughs> Just don't eat them. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, we've got another joke for our joke off segment. This one is from Dino Inglese. He's actually uh, my guy that's doing all of the graphic design work for me. So this is from Dino. Uh, and this one here goes a little bit like this. So there was a lady who goes to the doctor's office and she sees the doctor and she goes, Oh, hi, doctor. Um, I've got a problem. I've, I'm really gassy, I can't stop farting, and they don't stink, and they don't make any sound. So I'll do these silent farts, and he's like, okay, this is interesting. He goes, um, he goes, she goes, as a matter of fact, while I was in the waiting room, I let go of about 20, right? And just now speaking with you, I've, I've, I've done about two. And he's going, okay, okay, all right, I'll tell you what, here's a prescription, take these tablets twice a day, and come and see me in a week's time. So one week later, she goes back to see the doctor. And she goes, oh, doctor, um, I've taken the tablets and something really weird's happened. Goes, I'm still farting, but, but now they really stink. <laughs> he goes, great, fantastic. Now we've got your sinuses cleared. Let's work on your hearing next. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And that's it for our Joke Off segment. How about a round of applause for Artie Vincent joining us for Joke Off? Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You. Hello, nice to see you again, Osipa. Listen here, but uh, my rank is officer. Yes, oh. Osipa. Now listen here, I've had a I've had a hard day. Now look, uh, I've worked long and hard in the force to get where I am, right? And uh, I'm not going to put up with this. It's officer. Yes, Osipa. No, that's not right. All right, one more time, officer. That's right, Osipa. No, that's it. Get out of the car. I've had enough of this. Go on. Out we get. Right, now listen, I'm going to draw a circle in chalk here, right here on the ground. I want you to step inside that circle. I want you to stay put and not step one foot out. You got it? Yes, Osipa. Oh, God. Right, in you go. No matter what happens, you don't step one foot out. Got it? Yes, Osipa. Oh, my God, it's... It's officer, all right? How bloody hard is it? Oh, you think that's funny, do you? Eh? It's all the Osipa. It's officer. How bloody hard is it to say <laughs> officer? <laughs> You're laughing again. Sorry, Osipa. Damn many times I have to say it's officer. All right. Stop that laughing, eh? You think that's funny? <laughs> So funny. Dolly Osipa! Oh, look, that's it. I've an absolute gut full of this. It's Officer, all right? Officer, get it right! I've <laughs> an absolute gut full of this. Why is it every time I turn around and smash up your car, you're having a good old jolly laugh? Because every time when you turn around and are smashing the headlights, I just step out of the circle. <laughs> oh, thanks for having a good old jolly time then. Uh, you have a good day, love. Cheers. <laughs> ah, 
Hello and welcome to Bar Jokes. And joining me today is our special guest comedian, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Doug Chappell Jr. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Marco. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. Thanks oh. for joining the show. Thanks oh. for joining me at the bar. No, oh, thanks, for, thanks for having me. Now, oh. bar jokes. I'm I've, I've actually terrible at telling jokes. I love oh. telling stories and that, but my jokes, especially bar jokes, aren't great. Oh, okay. All right, well... Let's give it a go. So you want? Give it I, a go. Come I, on. I, I'll, t- I'll tell you one that it's. I, I like it. It's quirky. It's quirky. It's not like funny, funny, but it, it's quirky. So uh, this piece of string walks into the bar, and he just walks up to the bar and goes, "Oh, how you going, bartender? Can I grab two beers?" And the bartender looks at him and goes, "Mate, you're, you're a piece of string. I, I can't serve you." That's what you're talking about, mate. Just give us two beers. He goes, "Mate, I can't serve you." He goes, "Why not?" He goes, "You're a piece of string." So he goes, oh, okay, yeah, he goes, you know, so he leaves the bar. So as soon as he gets out the bar, he starts messing his hair up, you know, he ties himself, contorts himself, ties himself into, into a knot, and he comes in, and the, the guy goes, oh, I'll have two beers, thanks. And the barman goes, mate, I, I can't serve you. As I said before, you're a piece of string. He goes, nah, I'm afraid not. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it's quirky, didn't I? I love, I love that one, yeah. <laughs> tell us another one. We, we tell jokes, we tell bar jokes, we do sketch comedy. And we do stand up. It's all part of the show. It's all part of the fun. And these are great. These ones you can you can take home. You can tell your friends. You can tell your mates at the pub. Good little fun jokes you to remember. You can tell your friends at school that. You know they probably That's won't it. get it, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, tell them anyway. That's it. Excellent. I, right. I can tell you another one that you can't tell your friends at school. <laughs> Right. Do we keep going for this? Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah go on. So, yeah, we, we, oh, this is one you can't <laughs> oh, tell you your friends at school. Uh, a guy walks into a bar, and he's talking to the barman, and uh, he says, I'll tell you what. He goes, I've got a, an extraordinary talent. And the barman goes, what's that? He said, I can pee from any distance, right? Into, I'm so accurate. You could put a shot glass on the bar, right? And I could pee from standing 20 feet away and pee directly into that glass without spilling a drop and fill it up. Right? right? The barman looks at him and goes, mate, that's, that's impossible. You, you, you can't do that. Right? He said, do you want to bet? It? And he goes, yeah, I'll bet you. Yeah. And he goes, what? He said, I'll bet you 100 bucks. You, you can't do it. He said, okay, deal, done. So the barman puts a little shot glass on the bar. He goes, now get back, 20 feet back. He goes, okay, okay 20 feet back. So he gets back and starts peeing all over the place, peeing on the carpet and stuff. He even walks up close and starts peeing all over the bar and stuff like that. The barman looks at him and the barman's got a big smile on his face and he looks at the guy peeing. He goes, well, what are you laughing mate, at, mate? You just lost yourself a hundred bucks. He goes, yeah. He said, but the only thing is, I, I bet that guy down there, a thousand bucks, I could pee all over your bar and you'd be happy about it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Welcome back to Tell Us Another One, and now it's time for our special guest comedian to grace the stage. So uh, please, how about a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, Artie Vincent. And, and uh, as I mentioned before, check her out at the Melbourne Fringe Festival in October for Tight Mums Loose Units. Yeah. And now so, uh, it's over to you. The stage is yours. Enjoy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Did everyone have a great day today? Good for you. I did not. Thanks for asking. (laughs) This Indian man started yelling at me in my face at Cole's car park. You should not be driving like a lunatic. You're making all the Indians look bad and we facing racism just because of you. <laughs> I was livid, people, livid, livid. Looked straight into his eyes. Calm the fuck down, mate. I'm a Sri Lankan. <laughs> what a racist motherfucking bastard, right? <laughs> I could have been a Sri Lankan, I'm not. (laughs) Could have been. Yeah. Uh, I am a person of color. Had no idea until I moved to Straya. Yeah. (laughs) I find this term people of color very offensive because white people, they get the white privilege of keeping their color identity white. We should call them people of no color. (laughs) Now that's a fair division, right? There are two kinds of people in this world, people of culture, oops, sorry, color, (laughs) 
and people of no color. You know, yeah. We people of color, we get very offended when white people are not able to say our names properly. Poor fucking effort, right? Yeah. I'm with white people on this one, absolutely. It's a foreign language. I have said Gerald for a very long time. Yeah, to me it made complete sense. Letter G makes the sound G as in goat, grass, go, get, gate, girl, gun, guzzle, great, gorilla, Gary, Gavin, Gerald. <laughs> like when you've got the letter J that makes the sound J, then leave G alone for George's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that happened to die, <laughs> this guy started at work, came up to me, hi, I'm Christopher with a K. <laughs> I was like, that's great, because Christopher with C-H should be Christopher. <laughs> 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 any any married married people give me a woo if you're married we don't want to admit it <laughs> you don't want to, i'm married as well yeah 17 years yeah nothing to wow about it i never never wanted to get married you know the thought of having sex with that one person for the rest of my life <gasps> terrible right absolutely horrendous yes then I reached a stage where I just couldn't be bothered with all that effort that goes into a one-night shag. <laughs> you know, waxing, makeup, holding in the fart. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and sex toys were great, you know? Was, I was having fun. But the girls, they felt neglected. Yeah, they started crying. They were like, you're being so selfish, bitch. Like, we need some tender, loving care. <laughs> I said, okay, so I married for the girls, just for them. You know, and all my married friends were like, Arti, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Sex goes out of the window after marriage. I was like, <laughs> I mean, just look at me. Who wouldn't want a piece of this every single day? <laughs> Feeling horny right now, could easily pick one of you, right? I know that. But no, I'm fucking married. So I'll go home with this horny feeling, look at my husband, you again. <laughs> and the feeling will go away. You know? Sometimes after drinking one or two bottles, I can get over the feeling, put a leg on him. He's got a standard excuse. Oh, not tonight. I've got a headache. Yeah, last night I went in prepared, shoved two Panadol down his throat. I was like, you've got 10 minutes. I'll be back, bitch. Tick tock. <laughs> Panadol did not work. So now I'm on a lookout for roofies. <laughs> With a little bit of Viagra, of course, you know. Yeah. I'm a very good Hindu girl married to a Catholic. And both the families, you know, they, they respect each other's culture. My mom, she called me up on a Good Friday. <laughs> Happy Good Friday to you! <laughs> oh, I was like, oh, mom, have you already called up my in-laws and wished them? Oh, no, 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 darling, I thought I will call you first. <laughs> I was like, I explained her why there is nothing happy about Good Friday. Oh, very good, very good, you told me. Now I will call up your in-laws and I will say, so, so, so sorry to hear about Christ. <laughs> Did not grow up celebrating Easter. Totally forgot, totally like, totally forgot to put out Easter eggs for my daughter. 
She came crying. <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> The bunny did not come for us. There are no Easter eggs. I have checked. That's when it occurred. I, I was like, huh. well, uh, that's exactly what happens when you don't tidy up your room. <laughs> don't, don't do that. <gasps> she started crying. She's like, oh, but I thought that was Santa. <laughs> yeah. Don't feel bad for her, please. And don't judge me. All you look, I can see judgment dripping for from each and every person here. Oh my god, look at you guys. Do you have kids? They do. You know what I mean? Like they don't even yeah. Like, please don't feel bad for her. Feel bad for me. Uh, my father passed away. I'm okay, thanks for asking. He's with Christ. <laughs> no one has the courage to inform his mom, my 97-year-old grandma. So I suggested we never tell her, and finally, when she does die, she'll be in for such a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Uh, I don't teach yoga anymore, you know, people can be fuckwits. Guided meditation, I told the class to go to their happy places. What's, what's your happy place, ma'am, in the red cardigan or jumper? Um, happy place. Probably the fridge with a bottle of water. <laughs> it's a very happy place. Fridge with a bottle of? White. White. Good. So I told the class to sip on a Bloody Mary by the beach. Pretty good, right? Not for Fiona, no. She had to intervene. Oh, auntie, uh, could it be something more wholesome and pure just because we are in a yoga class, you know? Like organic kombucha. <laughs> I was like, yeah, sure. How about uh, swallowing jizz? <laughs> there cannot be anything more wholesome and purer than that. And fucking organic, bitch. Namaste. <laughs> uh, that's all from me tonight. Thank you very much. You guys have been wonderful. Thank you. All right, well, one more time, ladies and gentlemen, Artie Vincent. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thanks very much for being part of our Tell Us Another One family. Uh, thank you guys for supporting Tell Us Another One. Thanks for supporting live comedy. It's come to the end of our show. We'd like to thank our show sponsors. So Marianne from Liberati Therapy. Round of applause for Marianne. She's giving our gift pack. We've got Giuseppe from Sea Chicken Wines. And Olga from Ready, Set, Frost. Uh, we have a draw prize today, so I hope you've kept your tickets. We're going to be reading out a number, and uh, one lucky person will be bringing home six beautiful wines of sea chicken wine. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. While we're at it, let's uh, have a bit of round of applause for uh, the Dandenong Club. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. all right. I'd like to thank Olga for doing our AV today, taking care of all our AV needs. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and that wraps up our uh, another exciting episode of Tell Us Another One. Tell your friends, tell your family, and remember, be good and good things happen.